do you want to have fun and review a math paper right now? Today I have read this paper, a comparison of rational neural network base approximation. Okay, not a math paper, but it's... And I want to give a short overview of what this paper is about. Machine learning one. But there is some math, math there. So let's do it together. The general idea that in this paper they do some numeric computations uh, where they compare uh, how well neural networks with rational activation function approximates um, non-smooth and non-Lipschitz functions versus the classical rational uh, approximation, which is like triple A algorithm. The triple A is a pretty cool algorithm and I am planning to do a couple of videos about it. But today is mostly about rational uh, neural networks. Is a neural networks, which is like a fit forward with a rational activation function. And uh, in their paper, they consider um, where is it like that they talk about the uh, structure they have a network with three layers input layer um, uh, the hidden layer either with two nodes or with ten nodes and output layer and what they're trying to do they're trying to approximate uh, either this function absolute value of square root of absolute value of x minus one fourth on the interval between negative one and one or they approximate the solution to partial differential equation, uh, which is uh, given by um, these partial derivatives uh, from, from the other paper. And, but they, in this case, they're, they're using different way how they measure the error. So that's why they cannot give a, a direct comparison uh, with that paper in terms of errors. For different architectures, again, when they change the different layer, hidden layer of the neural network, they construct different approximation of uh, solutions for that partial differential equation. And one of the examples of the solution as a 2D or 3D, you can see um, on this picture right now. And uh, for smaller amount of neurons, they have not the best approximation, but the more neurons they increase, as you can see, the approximation is getting uh, better and better. The interesting thing that a lot of my annotations, I'm using uh, Mac uh, and using Preview, unfortunately got disappeared and some of them are left. <laughs> and because my original plan was just go over my annotations uh, and uh, give some feedback. Here what the tables are bad because when you see just one test run, it doesn't tell me anything, I guess. It's good to have because we have like an understanding like random initialization where you start and you have. So what I will do instead, I will do at least like 10 runs and there is, I'm still learning this. So I'm, I'm not the best. I shouldn't like kind of to give too much opinionated opinion. But as I understand, you need to show like at least do like test of the like five best runs or whatever and just show like what is an average what you're getting and the overall like table i feel like on a graph they're more presentable so they can show you more information and table sometimes is difficult to read so that's why i prefer uh, graphs versus tables for this function i want to do my own experiments and to see what i'm going to get and also I want to replicate like all these computations over here and to compare what I'm going to get for the final loss. So in this uh, short code, sorry, it's really messy and stuff, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this activation function. Actually, I'm going to change it. I'm going to change to one plus, I'm going to use a simple one, one over x squared plus one uh, rational activation function. And the same as they did in their paper, we have 10 layers for the hidden layer. I'm going to generate the data set that is going to look, going to look like this. So on this data set, I'm going to train uh, my network. And uh, on the data set, uh, which I'm going to uh, evaluate, my network is going to be like this one. And I'm going to um, initialize my neural network. Uh, this uh, values I'm using for uh, in order like to uh, do my um, animations which I do like another code like over here and here I'm going to train 
and so you can see that uh, we expect um, to have a nice behavior because our loss function uh, drops way lower than they have for their final loss uh, but what is interesting that um, if I'm going to evaluate I don't have the sharp corner and somehow in their paper ah, they also get in kind of this value and stuff uh, but their rational activation function getting in more and more smooth so that's why for me it's interesting like to use their activation function and to see what they're going to get because I'm getting completely different and I actually like I also animated it so let me show you the animation neural network is going to learn this and unfortunately cannot learn like under this singularity because the slope here like shoots to infinity so I wonder like exactly how they got that their function actually learned the singularity because we exactly have the same parameters but different activation function so you can see if I'm going to use a real activation function and again, like this epoch uh, from the previous experiment, so ignored, I actually run between 0 and 200. Then we're going to have the following dynamic of the learning. And I'm still like not learning the singularity. I think I will do just experiments on my own and see if I'm going to be able to replicate the results. But so far, that's what we got. Because in their case, what they do, they use, so we have RLU activation function. And they use uh, four different approaches how they do the experiments. And they mention them over here. Uh, so what they do, they train neural network with RLU activation function. So it's just uh, x plus absolute value of x over 2. Then they train rational approximation function to RLU activation. So they do um, the activation function, which is rational function approximation of RLU. And then they do um, rational activation functions with trainable parameters. So that means you train not only the weights of the neural networks, but also you train the coefficients in the activation function itself. And then they do the fourth one with some training procedure when they train, it's called like split training and stuff. And I didn't really understand upon my first reading and after that, they do uh, two classical analysis uh, approximations is differential correction and triple A. Triple A is based on all these computations, one of the best because they, ga they, ga they got the smallest error, which was the order of, uh, where is it? Yeah, uh, this one, which is the order of e, uh, 10 to the power of uh, negative five and negative six. And they were like super fast in comparison, for example, to, tr to other methods. Uh, this is like the method five, uh, the classical one, and this is how we find with uh, uh, neural networks with rational activation function. And you can see overall that rational activation function uh, gives pretty bad loss in some sense. Uh, the loss that they use, they use uh, uniform mean square and uh, in comparison, for example, for triple A, when for the smaller amount of time, they're gonna get way better error. And they admit that. They say like triple A is in this case an unbeatable. Uh, but unfortunately what they do, they for triple A can use only the same degree for the power, for the top and for the denominator of the rational function. Overall, it's a really good paper. It provides nice experiments and computational examples. So if you want to start working with neural networks and do some computation, uh, some uh, experiments on your own, then this paper is a good start. And uh, I'm also like start to work with neural networks only last year. So right now, like either today or tomorrow, I want to replicate some of those computations and do some visualization how the neural network is actually learning those functions.